Three, two, and we are live. Hey, how the heck are you doing this fine day? Molly, how are you? I'm so great. I'm thrilled to be here with you and all your awesome peeps. Yeah, well, we, we should have lots of them. I hope, at least I hope we do. Uh, welcome, everybody, to our, our Gray Matters Unscripted. We uh, This is a, a weekly live stream we do primarily for the Gray Zone, which I understand Molly, you, you're going to be an honorary member of soon? So I have decided this morning that I had to reveal something pretty major. So I've had blue and purple bangs for several years now, and I actually bleached my bangs just on this side. You can kind of see some of the bleach here. So I sprayed them blue and purple this morning because the the it's so, so fading so bad. But right before I sprayed it, I realized this is what I'm going to reveal for just for Steve. Oh, uh, you've oh. never been more beautiful. <laughs> It's like a full inch of gray, but it's only on one side of my bangs. It's not, look, oh, it's like Carla awesome. DeVille. You I know. know what? If you grow it out, you might be one of those lucky women that have that shock. That's exactly what I've been talking about for years. And so just another benefit of staying at home that it's already grown out by like a full inch on one side. So I think I'm going to do it. I'm still, I have to say, and yeah. it's, and it's, and it's completely, <laughs> uh, it's completely not relevant to anything that's happening in the world, but my hair is the thing that is driving me the most crazy <laughs> about anything with the lockdown. Cause I'm used to getting my hair cut every two weeks back yeah. when I did my TV show. I got it cut every week. Sometimes uh, we had to for continuity. Yeah. My, but the, the boys but will I'm doing every two all weeks all and I, I feel like a chia pet. It's going <laughs> and it, cause it's the sides. They explode out. It, I mean, it's funny to me the way that the hair thing has actually been worse for the the men that I know, like for exactly that reason, because you do, you know, maintain it more often. I think I go every month, but still. Well, I'm looking forward to, I'm keeping my eye peeled on Facebook for the bad haircut stuff. <laughs> I because love it. There come, Cause people are, I don't know why of all the things that you're going to do yourself at home, haircuts are not one of them. Cause we all like, I don't know if you grew up. But I grew up in the Floby era and in the um, era, my mom used to cut my hair all the time. And I, I think I, I think when I was a kid, I had eczema in my back of my neck. So my mom had to cut my hair. But she would buy all these things because I hated having my hair cut. And she would buy these. There was I can still remember this one that was a comb that you stuck straight razors into, like razor blades into. And then you would comb your hair and the razor blade would like strip out. It would be like stripping a, a something. And it used to pull my hair and I'd cry and I... I I hated it. That sounds like and a torture it, machine. So what of this is actually very relevant to content creation because these things are trending right now. So I know you had crazy awesome success with a Zoom a video about how to use Zoom. That's something that's trending. And also um this the hair thing is actually trending. We have a client who did a Floby video like a week after all of this started happening. Are you and serious? I died yes and it was just her with her floby she has really short hair but so she, i don't know how she a had woman a doing a floby oh my yeah with a woman yeah and it looked she looked amazing she has really short awesome you know she rocks her short hair but i was like what <laughs> it was so good and such a you know the, there's opportunities like that for us to be able to see how we can serve by paying attention to what's what's trending what people are looking for so oh wow awesome. <laughs> oh dan 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 remember dan light remembers one of those crazy combs <laughs> Yeah, he, we had the yeah they were they were they were insane. So this, for those of you to, to let everybody know, we're live streaming today on both YouTube and Facebook Live, and we've got April. April's kind of in the in the control room today, kind of monitoring the different chats and helping you guys out as far as chat goes. Of course, my guest today is a lovely and talented Molly Mahoney, uh, the prepared performer. You have you've been one of the busiest of all of my social media friends. You're producing more content than anybody. I'm actually thinking about having to like find out how to unsubscribe from half of your stuff. You're <laughs> posting so much, but you've, well, you've been busy. Yeah, I have good news for you, Steve, is that I'm actually cutting back on it now. So I, during those first few weeks, I went into, you know, I have, Panic. as do you, I have this theater background as well. So, so many of my musician friends and theater friends who are completely shut down, I, you know, I went into like, how can I help all of them? Because I think we are so like, I'm so grateful that we have the tools that we have and we have the ability to help people to shift their businesses online. So I went into like, I was calling myself like the, the crazy digital mother Teresa, because I was creating so much content, trying to solve so many problems, but solve all the world's problems. Yeah. But I'm pulling back on it a bit simply because I know that the one thing that's the most important, Oh, I usually have a hat here. I don't know where it went, but I have this hat that says stay in action because if we're not, if we're just consuming content and we're not actually taking action steps forward, then there's no point. So I'm pulling back on some of my content, getting back to a more normal 
<laughs> well, well, I wanted you to come on today because going back to your original pre-COVID business, which was you, yeah. you were helping people and coaching people on their on-camera presence. And it, it, a lot of it was confidence coaching, I think, but presentation. And it, it got me thinking, you know, there's so many uh, business meetings now. We're all on video. And we're all on video a lot. And so for us, it's 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 same old, same old. But for so right. many people, it's new. And and just thinking about some of the little things that we intuitively think about that we don't even sorry, we don't we intuitively do. Uh <laughs> and and uh, just to improve so you don't look like such a doofus when you're on camera. And 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 and, and I I so we we playfully title this Don't Screw Up on Camera, which you totally you sent out an email to your community saying Steve's totally wrong. It's okay to screw up on camera, <laughs> it's, as long as you as long as you know how to recover, which is very. I'll give you props for that. But I thought well, we'd I think, go, go ahead. You know, it's really it's going to set people up to the pro one of the problems. I think one of the biggest things that you can do is release the need to feel that everything needs to be perfect because at some point something is going to happen. Whether it's you messing something up, whether it's the tech you know, just because there's so many people on the internet, there's so many things that can happen. And if you are clinging to this idea that you're going to be perfect, it's going to be a problem. So it, it's, there's a deeper level of preparedness underneath it so that you can handle when things screw up. And actually for me, I have found when things go wrong, that tends to be when I get the best results. Oh and yeah. I, oh, so, we did a webinar yeah. on Wednesday, April. Okay. Week confirm we did and it, we do a weekly webinar webinar wednesday april drop a link and next week we're talking about chrome add-ons could be an awesome webinar but last week we did um it was talking about meeting tools talking about zoom and other meeting tools yeah we had a pretty big audience we had maybe 400 people in the room 450 and at that point there it gets a pretty busy it gets to be a pretty busy webinar yeah Sorry. which is going to tax everything right like it's it's going to be more for you to handle as a human oh, yeah. Be more for the tech to handle and it's awesome but that's stuff to pay attention to and he's not there right now he's out there but Farley <laughs> settled in there and proceeded <laughs> to do a deep clean <laughs> <laughs> and he was he was there, ah, la, 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 la. he was going at it he was going at it strong i mean strong <laughs> for like 15 minutes and i was like in the zone there's 400 people in the room and in the zone and i'm focused away and everybody and the chat's going like crazy but i let april manage the chat so i'm not you even, didn't even in the chat it. And it's going, brrr, people are just howling away. And I'm oh. just, boom, boom, boom. but it ended up being a great, it added great energy to the webinar, right? The real oh my life. gosh, so funny. I love it. Yeah. I mean, that's one of the things that's happening now is like the playing field is even for all of us. So okay. whether you're Jimmy Fallon, whose kids are doing all the graphics for your lower thirds, I keep saying that Jimmy Fallon basically announced Lynn Manuel Miranda like this. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, and my guest. Oh, but there we go. There we go. I'm breaking things. Can you hear me? Did I mute yeah, myself? Okay. okay. Um, anyway, yeah. So there's all kinds of, you know, the playing field is even, and this is an awesome opportunity for you to step up, but you do want to have some sort of um, semblance of like trying to seem prepared. <laughs> so let's, let's, let's go through it. And I'd love to hear your questions in the, in the chat. I get both the chats from both Facebook and YouTube live. I see you all here. That's great. We're about 130 people or so now in the room. That is wonderful. Um, so the, the things that bug you, or the, the 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 lowest hanging fruit, the things that we should all do. Now, it doesn't matter whether you're doing a live stream like we're doing, or you're doing a Zoom call, or you're a teacher having meetings with your kids and using Google Hangouts. I, there's some basic principles yes. that we can all do. So what's yes. your what's your first principle? So my first principle is the idea of knowing who you are as a human being before you actually show up, because that's going to prepare you for everything else that's happening. And if you, if anything else that happens, you've got to figure out who you are first. That's going to help you to be prepared the way that you look on camera. It's going to be help you to be prepared the way that you speak on camera. It's going to help you to be prepared about even like in the way that you speak, there's different, um, you know, there's a level of casualness or there's a level of very professionalness, and you want to make sure that you know which of those lanes you want to go into. And if you don't know who you are first, None of that other stuff is going to work out in your favor. <laughs> yeah. So, so I, it's interesting that how you would go right straight for the right straight for the, the energy level. Cause my first thing is have a good mic. <laughs> a piece of tech. Oh my gosh. You know. <laughs> Just have, so, so, cause, cause, cause people will watch crappy live stream video, but if it's poor audio, ugh, forget yeah. it. Yeah. I, so, I, I mean, so I agree with you on the tech stuff. And I love to say if, 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 um, if you're worried about the gear, that is the fear. 
<laughs> so that you can make anything work. But I will say if there's one thing gear wise that you want to make sure you have in place, it is the microphone. I did a video training for our camera confidence program uh, a couple weeks ago and <clears throat> everybody was like, the sound is really weird. The sound is really weird. And I was like, come on guys. Cause it was just a little mini train. It was like a hop on, you know, nothing that I'd planned strategically. I was like, whatever, like, okay, I'll go plug my mic in. And I went and got my mic and I plugged it in <laughs> and I went back. I gave them such a hard time. I went back and listened to it. It was awful without the mic, like horrible. Cause I was on my big desktop and didn't realize how bad it was without the mic. So yeah, and you were using the, the, the little mic in the bezel of your desktop or uh, from the webcam or something like that. Yeah. Right? I didn't even have a webcam. It was just from my desktop. So oh. who knows what that was, I know. Rank but, amateur. Uh, Rank yeah. amateur. <laughs> And that's, so that's how it's going to show up when you're on a Zoom call too, to your credit. You know, when you're on a Zoom call, if you're not using uh, some sort of microphone, but, but, but I have to say, Steve, before that, you've got to decide who you are to know if you're going to invest in the $8,000 microphone that's going to make you sound like a radio announcer, or if you're just going to use earbuds, which make you sound a little bit better, but are a little more casual. Okay. Back up the bus Mahoney who spends $8,000 <laughs> on their audio system. I mean, that was a little, you know, <laughs> a, a little, a little over the top. What mic are you using? What mic uh, are you using? I use a Blue Yeti here. I do have okay. a really awesome mic that I use on stage that my husband actually bedazzled for me. That is a Sure 55 that I love. Oh, nice. Yeah. And it is going through an audio interface. Yeah. So I don't, yeah, I don't, I just have, I go, when it comes to the tech stuff and the gear, I go as easy as possible. So the Blue Yeti is what I use. I have it on a stand that is actually um, a mic stand that we use for the stage you're like gonna yourself you're gonna hurt yourself I know, I know. Great. stop it but then that way i can actually move it out of the way if i need to um yeah, yeah, but i love this, having the usb thing yeah what's yours oh mine it's electro voice re20 and was it eight thousand dollars no it, it, it's, about, it's about six hundred dollars but and then oh, it's going yeah. through the roadcaster so i like having the full audio but i use this for podcasting too this is right. all radio this is the mic that was actually in the, the last radio show that i did the last normal walk into the radio station, sit down in the booth, do a radio show. The last one that I did, the station that I was doing the show for, uh, converted to headset microphones. Ooh. They wanted to add video. And the quality dropped of the of all of our audio just because the, the headset mic's never as good. This is the Stevie Wonder mic. This is um, a just a, a brilliant voiceover microphone. It's, yeah. it's, it's standard. Many, many broadcasters. Which sounds they amazing, all them all. right? What'd you they say? They all them all. And I said, can I buy one off you? And they said, oh, I'll just take it. Okay. Oh, that's awesome. So, so that was great. Cool. So that was it. So that the question is what mic do I use? It is the Electro Voice RE20 going through now the Rodecaster Pro um keyboard um audio interface. And uh, so that's my setup. It's it's pretty cool. It's pretty it's dope, as they say. Dope. It's as dope. It's, <laughs> so if we if we talk about like some of those type, we can stay kind of in that zone and talk about no. the techie stuff if you want. I think we should go back and forth because okay, it's, cool. it's 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 what you it's, see. The thing is, what tips make people better on camera, or what makes their video better, is different in the eyes of the beholder. And a lot of people have a lot of people do have those performance issues and those presentation issues and the confidence issues. I mean, that's that's why I invited you on because yeah. I think you speak better to that than anybody. So, oh, thanks. so yeah. knowing who you are and that, that means, so I always tell people that when I am on my videos, I am me, but I'm just an amplified version of me. Yes. That's the simplest way that I can put it. Yeah. So I say you want to unlock your inner awesome and then elevate it. So you're really, but if you don't actually know who you are, it's hard to amplify it. Or maybe if you decide, if you don't really, if you're not clear, you're going to amplify something that you don't realize you're amplifying. So I actually have a little framework. Do you know? I don't know. I, I don't know if you know this, but do you know about the quesadilla of awesome? No. Oh my gosh, Steve. I'm so excited to talk about what <laughs> the quesadilla of awesome. Oh, the quesadilla quesadilla. Yeah. Like you were talking Mexican food. <laughs> yes. Um, but be careful. we got people all over. People are going to get hungry. Well, and one time I had someone from, I mean, we have a lot of people actually from Australia in my community, the mall stars. If you're here, mall stars, give me a mall stars. Woo. Um, I, and someone didn't know what a quesadilla was. So quesadilla is two tortillas with cheese in the middle, <laughs> just in case you're not sure. Yeah. But you can add anything into your quesadilla. You could add, sometimes I put spinach into it. You can add chicken into it. You could make it vegan cheese, right? So the point of this is that everyone has something that makes them uniquely awesome, even if it's just that you make an amazing quesadilla. And there's all sorts of ways to make your quesadilla your special sauce right so okay 
I like this. Dennis says, I'm a recovering perfectionist, never really cured. So this is going to help because it will allow you to identify what is it about you that makes you awesome as a human so that when things go wrong on camera or when you're deciding on what tech stuff you want to use or what background you want to use, it's all speaking towards that same elevated version of yourself. And that's how you create what I call a brand ambassador in your videos so that they go out and they really represent you like Steve with the dog taking a bath behind him. <laughs> that's probably part of his quesadilla of awesome. Mm -hmm. Right? <laughs> Fair enough. I have a little acronym for it. Do you want to know the acronym? Absolutely. Okay. So it's the word save. And okay. you're going to list out 20 things that make you a uniquely awesome human. You may think that save has four letters, but it actually has five in my acronym because I can't spell and I spell things wrong all the time. And this way, if I spell them wrong on purpose, you will get over it. So it's S-A-A-V-E is this acronym. And you're going to literally, so before you actually do this, Steve, will you do a little thing with me? Too? I got I to gotta stop you for a sec. <laughs> you're in the gray zone. You got to <laughs> slow it down. Okay, Cheryl, I have to tell you something. First of all, when I do videos on my page, oftentimes people say, Molly, talk faster. <laughs> so... <laughs> okay, well, not not for the gray zone. Not for the gray zone. But because I know that we're here, I, no, I got your back and I will slow down just a tad. <laughs> thanks so much. Okay. So the quesadilla of awesome. You're going to start by taking your hands like this, Steve. Put your hands like this. Okay. And is it going to make in, a farting sound? It is. It's magic. In, <laughs> inside this bubble, you're going to put everything that you offer in your business or that you put into your live streams that you do for your community, that you, you all the benefits you provide to the world. Got it here? Yep. I'm still here. Still okay. here. And now you're going to take it and you're going to throw it in the air like this. Whoosh. <laughs> okay. Okay. And now it's floating above us like Mikey TV in Willy Wonka. Okay. okay. <laughs> And what are you left with? Uh, you mean b behind me? Now left? Yes. All my bad stuff. <laughs> Is that wrong? Is this a test? It's a test. Michael Stelzner said salsa. So. <laughs> okay. Well, if I've taken all my awesome and I've thrown it up here, all that's left is all my not so awesome. Oh my gosh, I love you. You. T what was actually in here was the benefits from your business. We threw that up. Now you're left with you and the awesomeness that's you separate from your business. Okay. 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 That was really complicated. <laughs> it was really complicated. You know, that's what happens when I talk slow. If I go really fast, no one can reel it. Everyone just like gets it eventually. Okay. So just, you, <laughs> what you're going to do is you're going to list out 20 things that make you a uniquely awesome human being. Okay. And so I made an acronym for it. And Another it, one. No, it's S A A V E. I'm repeating it oh, for, okay, the, the same for, for the gray zone. And then <laughs> uh, the first thing is your skill sets. And so these are the things that you're naturally gifted at. For me, speaking very quickly, obviously. <laughs> but you're going to list out the things that you're naturally gifted at and that you always okay. have been gifted at. The next thing is, and Steve, this is something that you do so well, the, the A is for your appearance. And so the fact that you're calling it the gray zone and the whole, right. What's this show called? This? Yeah. Oh, this is, this is unscripted. The gray zone. This is our live version. The gray zone, the gray matters, gray matters. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But I mean, you were calling this the gray, gray zone. So I was going to mention this is like unscripted gray matters, right? Yep. So you've brought that in as something that someone could feel self-conscious about, but instead you're celebrating it because it's flipping awesome. So much so that when I came on the show, the first thing that I showed you was that I'm growing out my gray stripe on this side, right? And, and so that's why I think one of the reasons it's so important for us to identify things about our appearance that we love is because when we show up on camera, if we don't love our appearance or things about our appearance, our own energy is going to be depleted. Yeah. We try and we try and pull back. We, yep. Yep. So it's not about what other people think about the way you and look. This about is, what you think. Now, this is, we're talking about people that are doing live stream and stuff, but this is the same if you're in a meeting. It's the same. Honestly, it's the same if you're in a Zoom meeting or yeah. if you're in a meeting in real life. Like if you go to a parent teacher meeting, if you go to, you know, a, a first date, it's the same across anything that you're showing up for, actually. Now, I've yeah. got and, and you've probably got it, too. I've got like I've got backup hats near me <laughs> that I can wear in case the hair is just a disaster and I haven't and I haven't and I'm not quite ready. OK, so truth be told, do you want to see my backup hat because I've got it here. 
Yep. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Well, that makes the audio kind of suck, though. Okay. But no, but you can lift it. You can do it like this. Save. Okay, so S is for skills. Oh, there you go. That <laughs> look like a an extra from the life of Brian. Okay. Or or yeah. Okay. okay. Your skill sets. Yep. Your appearance. Your appearance. The next A. That's the extra A for my spelling mistake. Oh, you got next double A. I didn't know. Realize it was a silent A. Okay. Yeah. It's it is so that you don't worry when I spell things wrong in my copy. So the the next A is for the activities that you love separate from your business. So knitting, crocheting, walking your dog, singing, you know, and Steve, that's a per like the reason which we didn't talk about yet at all. The reason Steve and I first connected is because we both have, uh, you know, backgrounds in musical theater, and we actually have sang together in the opening keynote at Social Media Marketing World for four years now, right? Yeah. True. That's so weird and cool. Yeah, it is weird. It, it might, yeah, it'll be interesting if we ever do it again. We will. And, but that's, you know, that's part of um, our case of awesome is the fact that we both have musical theater backgrounds. And so it's something we could connect to separate from business. Yeah. So, indeed. Activity. Yeah, and it, it I'm going to explain how this like goes into your whole how you put this into action, but it also provides great content that's separate from things that you're selling. So non-product based solutions and it makes it when you show up to a meeting on Zoom and pieces of what you love are behind you like Steve has, it's a great conversation starter. Yep. So um yeah. So we're up to, to we were just through the two A's. Appearance yep. and activities are your two A's. Now your V. Values. And so the more that you celebrate your values in a loud way, the more you'll attract the people that you want to work with. Like you, I, I'm assuming in your show, you talk about, like, I've heard you talk about like millennials a lot, right? And that attitude that comes there and, and how the, the, um, the way that we should be, I don't want to put values into your mouth, so I should stop. <laughs> Go ahead, do it. Go ahead, do it. Let's, because it's oh, interesting to see what your perspective of my values okay. is. So I think sometimes, you know, we, I hear you talk about the fact that we should be looking to the gray matters for more wisdom and that you can't learn experience, right? You have to yeah. actually go through something. Experience to Experience is not something you can search. That's what you always say. I knew it. I had yeah. something there. Experience is not something you can Google. It's Google. on a t-shirt. Yeah. yeah. Which is, that speaks to your values and you're putting yes. it out there, which is. Absolutely. Yeah. And for us, we talk about joy. We use joy as a fierce form of activism. So if you're not someone who can handle the fact that even in this craziness, I'm doing everything I possibly can to be as joyful as possible. <laughs> right? And we've decided this week we're on a family cruise, which is what we're supposed to be doing. So I decided we're going on a pretend family cruise. <laughs> so I've been, com you know, been committing posting green screen pictures of yourself and uh, with margaritas and stuff. I like that. <laughs> yeah. It's like, I put a, we have a hammock in the backyard, so I'm taking myself on a cruise. So the values, and when you put those values out there, you'll attract the people you actually want to work with and you'll be more confident showing up. In and your it's, well. that's right. If you are present, I can tell you from so much personal experience that if you're presenting to a like-minded group versus mm -hmm. an adversarial group, you're so much more relaxed if you're if you're if you're preaching to the choir. If you're and, we're people who share your values. And when things go wrong, like we talked about in the beginning, if something happens and you've really put your values out there and you've attracted the people who have similar values, you're going to be able to recover from it so much more easily. I have a key for that. Ooh. And that is, and this is something that I teach all the time, Molly. And I talk about how we don't view ourselves through the same eyes as we view others. Hmm. And that if you, if somebody makes a mistake in a video, if we mess up here right now, if it bothers us, it'll bother the audience. It'll bother the viewers. Mm. But if it doesn't bother us, it won't bother them. Yes. That we are more empathetic when we're viewing a video than we are judgmental. Mm. But we judge ourselves. We're not empathetic towards ourselves. We never give ourselves a break. Yeah, self-empathy. What an awesome concept. Well, it is because we do it for others. You know, if if, 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 if we were having a technical issue right now and something like that, people would feel bad for us if we felt bad, but if we just roll with it, yeah, then they realize it doesn't bother us. Then it's, it's just part of the thing. Like Farley chowing down, you know, if I let it bother me, if I was embarrassed by it, if I apologized for it, or I said, Oh my God, I'm so sorry, everybody. Then people would start to, uh, they would all pick up on that it. energy. 
Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So yeah. true. So okay, true. That, what's the last okay, E? The last one is, okay. And Steve, I, you might know about this, but if not, I'm about to change your life. So get ready for it. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this E is for things you like to eat. Okay. And let me explain. You so, caught me by surprise with that one. <laughs> so here's what it is. Uh, if you can find polarizing food that you either love or don't love, and you can talk about it in a in strategically, which I'll mention, I'll explain exactly how to do it in a second. You are going to increase your engagement and increase the ability for you to stay top of mind in other people's minds. Like it creates this little this little worm in their ear that sticks like a song that won't go away. So when they see that food other places, they're going to think of you. So here's my suggestion for you. Go to your personal Facebook profile, like right now, if you're yeah. watching this, go to your personal hey, Facebook okay. profile. Not, don't leave yeah. us though. Don't leave us. Stay here. You can do it right after. But most people have the ability to multitask just a little bit. I know where we are. So maybe the multitasking that I suggest is a little too do, much. Do not, do not, do not <laughs> millennial speak to us. <laughs> you're the one that said it. Don't leave us, but go and pull up your personal Facebook profile. Okay. And then you're going to write these words. You're going to write Brussels sprouts, yes or no? Oh, Question mark. I, no, you were the one that starts all that crap. I hate that crap. Okay, but let me explain why it works so well. So when you write Brussels sprouts, yes or no, even if you haven't posted on your personal Facebook timeline in a long time, you are going to get so many comments and you're not only going to get yes and no comments, you're going to get recipes, you're going to get people sending you like full videos of why Brussels sprouts are the, the, the cause of COVID. Like you're going to get all sorts of crazy things about Brussels sprouts. And then what happens is you can actually look at the people who have commented on that post and you can talk to them mm -hmm. like a human being. Engaging, yes. Yeah. So the other thing though, is that if you think about, now you have this list, the, um, your skill sets, your appearance, your activities that you love, your values and the things you like to eat. So for me, it's Brussels sprouts, sushi, you know, um, kombucha. Okay. So I take those things, uh, la crema wine, I take those things and I'm going to put all that stuff on my list and then I'm going to take my fingers like this. So take your fingers like this and you're going to tap them on your I chest. I didn't know this was. I know. Sorry. Okay. And you're going to close your eyes and think about the things on that list. Okay. And now you are tapping into that bubbly sense of who you are. And you're going to come into the video as you as opposed to coming into the video or the Zoom call or the whatever it is, worrying about what somebody else thinks, as opposed to trying to be like Luria. This is your warm up. This is getting into the headspace. Yes. Awesome. I never thought about doing that before a video. Oh my See, God. See, I, I often talk about there. the importance of ritual and I do I do it in a different way. It's, it's the rituals that I go through, how I prepare, yeah. how I used to prepare to go on camera, you know, which is the makeup, which is brushing your teeth, which is, you know, doing that things, which is organizing your stuff, the ritual that gets you into the performance space. Yes. And I actually was thinking about you as I was doing that this morning, doing my makeup. And I was thinking when we're doing shows, right, when you would do your show, you would have a, th a thing that you would do every single time. Yep. And, and it was like the system, which also then makes it not only a ritual that prepares you for being on camera, but it also becomes something that you can make rather short. It doesn't have to be super long, no. depending on what the ritual is. And I think getting ready to get on camera is something that stops a lot of people from actually getting on camera because they don't want to think about how long it's going to take them to get ready. It creates, speakers know this, theater, theater performers know this, people who have to go on on a regular basis know this that there is a an energy state that you want to get into before you go on which is mm -hmm. which is the focus and the it's in the zone that you're in yeah and it's getting you into that zone to to perform cuz because here's one thing that I, i'm going to i'm going to we're going to get to a little bit of technical stuff in a minute but <laughs> recognize that the amount of energy that it takes to convey and communicate and engage over video mm -hmm. is far more energy you have to put far more watts into it yeah. Then you do person to person, face to face, where you're there, because so you do need to be amplified in order to have the same impact. So yeah. even if you're in a Zoom call with your team or your meeting, if you are the same level of energy as you would be in a face to face meeting, the, your presence isn't there. You don't command presence by your physical by by the physical fact that you're there. Well, and they're you, only getting a portion of you, so they're not. There's a yeah. lot of your body that they're missing as well. Yeah. So, so it, so if you want to put your best 
face forward, you have to amplify the energy. Yeah. Do you, yes. Car- you see what Carla posted? I did. I did Carla, video okay. First of all, hour. I just need to say that Carla tops uh, of like one of the funniest humans I've ever met in my life. So knowing that humor is one of Carla's pieces of her quesadilla of awesome, how brilliant is it that she said that last week she did a video where the video pointed at the ceiling the whole time and no one told her until five minutes before, before the call was ending. And that's people, and that's people just trying to be, just trying to be polite. Isn't that hilarious? Oh so gosh. that brings me to the next technical. You've done such a good job on the emotional. The next yeah. technical thing is video. Okay. I'm yeah. not so, like lighting, having good lighting and all of that is important, but the angle of your camera is so important and people, nobody pays attention to it. My gosh, this is what we, we talk often when we talk about Instagram husbands. Do you know the concept of Instagram husbands? Yes, I think so. Like the, 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 the yeah, the, what? Tell me though. Yeah, it's like a joke about like the, the, the husbands of influencers who have to take selfies and not selfies, but have to do, who are taking photos of their wives. And we talk about the fact that Instagram husbands know that you need to have the angle, the camera above eye level. And I actually have a client who just bought a new a laptop and he got on a call with me and he was like, I am freaking out. I don't know how I realized this, but on this laptop, it's an Asus lamp laptop. They put the camera on the bottom of the screen. It's the weirdest thing I've ever seen. So every, no matter what you do, the video is going to be like here, right? So there's all sorts of reasons you want the camera higher. So thank you well, for talking about that. I used to, it went in back in TV, we called it the princess Diana angle. Cause you <laughs> never saw a photo of princess die. That wasn't, <laughs> slightly looking down at her. So if you, so your, your, your video just looks so much better if you just elevate. Now people don't think to do that, but all you do is you take your notebook and you put it on a couple of books. If you're, yep. if you're using the notebook camera, you raise that angle to at least minimum eye level, but a few degrees above eye level is optimum. It's actually one of my tricks for having more energy on, for looking like you have more energy on camera, because even right now, little secret, I'm using a standing desk. And if I stood up straight, this is how I would be. I do all my videos with my legs spread out, standing, like squatting kind of, not squatting, but like I'm in like athletic mode standing oh, yeah. here. So because, you're, you're in the power pose. Yes, totally. <laughs> yes. But this way I know when I look at the camera, my eyes actually look more open because the camera's here. If the camera was here and I was to look at you this way, it closes my eyelids. Yes. Yes. So, Never mind like the other vain things that we can think about, like, you know, doing a video like this. If we have like double chin situation. Screenshot, quick, somebody. What? I wanted somebody to take a screenshot. <laughs> Here, wait, let's do it. Wait, let's I can't, do it. My, my beard covers mine. Yeah, but let's do your good angle and my bad angle with Linda's amazing comment there. Ready? Okay, so one, two. You're taking one for the okay. team. Oh, my God. <laughs> So my my niece always makes fun of me for taking selfies up above. She's like, why do you always do that? She's in high school. And I said, Olivia? I was like, watch. And so we did a photo up above. And then I made her take a photo with me like this. So I have the before and after. So funny. Dan saying this, the Dell XPS series has their cameras in the bottom. That's that ridiculous. the stupidest thing I've ever heard of. They just okay. don't get it. People Two just other- don't get it. So weird. Two other things about that. One is, and this could work for men if you are open to wearing some makeup, definitely women if you're wearing makeup, is I, every single time I do a video, I put this bright eyeshadow right here that's white because it's like a highlighter on stage that opens up your eyes. So it makes your eyes appear more energized. And it doesn't have to be like mine's kind of shimmery. It can just be a little bit of like a whiter, uh, brighter foundation or concealer right in the middle. And it actually opens, it makes your eyes appear more open and engaged and awake. And I use it and you'll start to, if if you use a consistent camera angle and you start to realize how it works for you, you'll start mm-hmm. to use it. Like for example, I use it all the time. I, I do the all the time when I want to make a point, I always do the peer over my glasses mm-hmm. thing at people like grandpa, right? Or like dad being disappointed in you. And so <laughs> I, I use that a lot. Oh, glasses is another thing to talk about because if you're, look at this, like if your light is too low or if you're looking up at your light, you're going to get circles in your glasses. I get this question all the time. My ring light is purposely very high so that it doesn't actually reflect in my glasses. And there, you can also purchase glasses if you buy buy very high index lenses, which are far Mm -hmm. thinner, you can get them with anti-reflective coating. That again, reduces the amount of glare that you'll get so you can see your eyes through the glasses. These are task glasses that are specifically designed for for it. I like it. And sometimes I notice when you use those reflective ones, it changes the color. Like see how it looks like green kind of? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't remember if I have that on glasses or not. Um, Another thing is, 
this is something you can use whether you're using StreamYard, Zoom, BeLive, Ecamm, whatever, is if you have, uh, so I'm gonna give an option for a Mac and for a PC. So if you have a Mac, you can use, let me show you this magic, you can use something called eyeglasses, which allows you to make adjustments to the brightness of your video to the contrast oh. so easily. And it's just something that downloads onto your computer. So the brightness that'll help, but then also check what else you can do. You can do fun things like this and be like, Steve, I love being with you on the show. So that's eyeglasses. <laughs> is that an Apple app or is that? Um... It's a tool from Ecamm. It's super, it's, oh, okay. I just checked it again okay. recently. It's only $19. It's a virtual camera that goes right onto your computer. You can also, um, do this, which is if you're, cause if you have writing behind you and it's backwards, you yeah. can switch it. If you're doing Facebook live, for example, if you're going native yeah. live on Facebook. So do, are you using the eyeglasses as a virtual cam then? Yeah. Okay. So when I first logged in, I just selected the camera that I was using. You can do that on most virtual, like, you know, you can do it on blue jeans. Even you can do it on zoom, yeah. all these different things. Um, and you also can use, a, if you're on a PC, I know that there's also Snapcam, which is the Snapchat, Snapchat camera. Right. Yeah, so yeah. Th that's that's how that poor priest that was de delivering mass <laughs> in Italy ended up having a, was it a potato head the whole time he was delivering the mass? <laughs> I heard about that. So be careful about your camera settings. Like, actually, this is a huge mistake that I made, which I'm so bummed about. And usually with mistakes, I'm like, I'm okay with it. But I did a few live streams with Les Brown and there are, I'm so grateful for this. And he calls me his live video mentor, which is like, if you don't know who Les Brown is, you got to be hungry and Google him and you'll see. But I didn't realize in my eyeglasses um, little tool, somehow the gamma got way off. And so the videos that are so fuzzy, like they're, they're like this kind of not crisp. And I could not for the life of me, we tried all this different lighting. I was actually at his house and the setting on my eyeglasses was off, which I realized like two weeks later. Oh, wow. Yeah. So you do have to be careful. So, so just so people know technically what we're talking about here, it's an app that you run that then takes over the camera. All of these different streaming services, Zoom, we're using StreamYard here right now. They all look to your system for to allow you to give multiple different video sources. If you had multiple video cameras, like a lot of us have an eyesight camera mm -hmm. and a, an external webcam, allows you to choose which camera. Ecamm ha has the ability to create either with Ecamm Live or with this, um, with this what's it called, the eyeglasses? I, with an eye, the letter I, not eyeglasses. Yeah. It allows you to use that and then it does processing on the, on the camera itself and then that becomes it. So you, it allows you to actually do switching in the background or add these special effects. So it's not that technically difficult to do, but you do have to go through a process before. But there's also, don't forget that typically speaking, if you buy like a Logitech webcam, you also have the camera settings so you can adjust them. So I, for example, one of the things that I do, and here's another great hardware tip, I turn off autofocus on my camera the second that I set it up. Mm. Because you'll notice that if you talk to a lot of people, sometimes you're racking in and out of focus. The and, it, and it goes zoom in and it goes fuzzy and then it tries to focus on you. That drives me crazy. If you turn off autofocus and just leave it kind of set for the infinite level, which is where it sets here, mm -hmm. uh, you're going to be in focus. Now, you you won't have a nice blurred background and like yeah. you know, the DSLR. But doesn't it drive everybody crazy when they're talking to oh. somebody, they're zooming in and out, the, 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 the autofocus is... Tune it's in. insane. I mean, I tried to use, I tried to use a DSLR, which I have like set up on my desk, not that I ever use it, but I had it because I wanted to have that really, you know, beautiful elevated background. But then that comes back to my quesadilla of awesome. I would rather have something that's crisp and clear where I can actually move and be a little more energetic than have this angelic background that some people might, might be more in line with their brand. So, so uh, Claudia took up your advice as far as the Brussels sprouts post goes, and she, she is rocking the Brussels sprouts post. So that is good. I love it. So yeah. good. And uh, Cheryl's helping. It's called eyeglasses. For the Mac. And I think it's a paid for product. I think it, they charge it's 1990, $19.99. It's like okay. for lifetime yeah, access. I like that. Okay. Uh, they're asking, um, oh, Wentworth Divorce Mediation and Consulting LLC. So as, as I like to call them, Wenty. Um, <laughs> camera suggestions, Logitech, the iPhone. So that's a really interesting point. Um, you know, setting up for your desktop and using a good mic like we've got and a good camera like we've got mm -hmm. is plan A. But if you don't have that, plan A1, 
use your smartphone if you're getting into a Zoom call or you're in these meetings because the camera and the mic on your phones is often way better than we get from notebooks in in our desktop setup unless we are have intentionally set up a good system like we have. Do you agree? Yeah. Yeah, you know what's I, I think test it on yours because for some reason, I don't know why the the camera on this laptop that I'm using right now, it's an older Mac Pro or whatever. I don't even know, MacBook thing, <laughs> thicker one that's not like fancy and new. I don't know what it is, but the camera on this is way better than than a lot of other things. Even sometimes I, I can't figure it out. Even no other MacBook it is. They're crap. Yeah, I don't I don't know because I have a new um like MacBook Air that I was going to start using because this one's a little older and kind of you know running a little slower, but I'm obsessed with the camera on this one, so I don't ever use the other one. <laughs> so just test your own and make sure. Oh my gosh, I can't believe I didn't start with this. Can I tell you when it comes to camera quality, this is what bugs me the most. My fingers are very clean, obviously, but when people have smudgy cameras, like oh. Clean. I can't. My fingers are really clean. I'm very you proud of Get them. nose grease on it too first. Yeah, oh, good idea. I could put makeup on it. There we go. There we go. I don't you know. know. <laughs> Anyway, so wait, I could put eyeshadow on it. Anyway, there's so many times when people don't realize their camera is actually dirty. So just clean it right before you go live because that is going to make it like fuzzy and you aren't going to come through the camera as well. I will say if you're doing a Zoom meeting and using your phone, there are some things that you can't um, take advantage of, like, you know, recording to the recording different things like that. So you could use both though. You could log in from your computer and then have those abilities there and then have log in a separate login from your phone for that kind of camera. Zoom doesn't always take camera settings that are applied. Like when you use the Logitech camera settings, they don't always carry through. It's, it, 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 it confuses me sometimes how Zoom does it. Mm -hmm. Jim Dickerson says, or J Dixon says, uh, don't be too close to your camera. It does. It makes your nose look big. Apparently your nose is okay, Molly. But he says that if I was closer to the camera, perhaps my nose would look big. Well, I'm at an age where the nose and the ears keep growing and everything else is shrinking. So, yes. This is so actually something big that... My dad, when he died, had ears that were this big on his head. <laughs> oh, my gosh. It's something that I've, that I've heard about, though, with the way that I do my videos. I am right up in your face, which I know is not common. And the reason that I did that in the beginning is because I didn't have a full space where I could... There was no room in my office... Like how Steve has this awesome wall behind him. My office was mostly windows and I could, there was nowhere for me to go except for one little wall right by the door. So like when, when, if my husband ever tried to come in the office while I was streaming, he would actually hit my foot, like hit my chair. And I just used a, um, a, a conductor stand, a music stand as my desk for my computer. And then I used, I had a wall backdrop right there close up to the wall. So it was like this super small little area that I did it. And we built over a half a million dollar business in that little teeny tiny hole. <laughs> like you don't need anything super fancy behind you. So just know, but that's why I get so close to the camera. And Good I just stuff. like, Hey, I'm in your face. Mike is asking us to explain the mirroring thing on webcams. So mirroring on what's happening with mirroring is, is depending on what service you're using. Um, as far as broadcasting, it determines whether or not you have a, a flipped or uh, the mirrored image. And it's just how the camera is capturing the information and then transmitting it. So typically speaking, when you use, I think it's when you use the Facebook Live um, app on your smartphone, it's going to flip the video for you on you, isn't it? No, like, opposite. Is it usually, it's the opposite? Well, it's backwards. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's what I mean. It's, it's backwards. backwards. Yeah, because so in most cases, you want to flip it back. Like, so for Steve and I right now, if I go to the right, I'm seeing myself on the camera going to the left. Yeah. Right. Which is confusing for a lot of people, but that way the words will show up the right way. Yes. So if you are giving instruction and you're going to be saying on your, uh, and you want to tell people to, to click on the right side. Yeah. And, you you have to. To, and you're giving directions. If you're teaching dance, you flip it. No, no, you wouldn't because people are used to looking at you straight ahead. And so you have to, I mean, play with it, but just the main thing is for words. Like, I don't think it's as, it's as important for even like teaching dance, unless you're saying right or left or whatever, but yeah. the words. And I also just want to highlight now that I made my camera dirty. Do you see how my words are like blurry? Yes. It looks like yes. it's now I can't clean it. Yeah, Blur. I know. I need something to clean it now. Yeah. But, <laughs> use my, here, watch. Ready? Okay. <laughs> there we go. Perfect. Yeah. Hooray. That's better. Mike's nose has been driving him crazy lately in Zooms. <laughs> You got to learn to love your nose. Love the schnoz. <laughs> Most webinars by default tend to mirror the image. Most webcams, sorry. 
and less yeah. and the reason being that people tend to see themselves yeah so it's it, it's just getting comfortable with but recognizing that you're probably better off having it mirrored so that your text is proper all the time it's just you're, you're yeah. gonna be farther ahead if you do that hey i have one more thing that i really want to make sure we cover before we wrap up is can i share it yeah because you you've got to go soon you've got a hard out in a a few bit. Minutes, yeah i have a um i'm a little yes a few minutes so just because you've been speaking since you were probably around two years old, maybe sooner, maybe later, that does not mean that you are actually effective in communicating. <laughs> and people get worried about saying, um, they get worried about tripping up on their words, especially if it's live because they can't stop it and fix it. And so I want to let you know that if you trip up on your words, if you say, um, we already talked about how that's like, you want to, you know, energetically don't apologize for it. But if you would like to eliminate that or, minimize that warm up you are using your your breath is a huge source it's like an accordion right so there's this thing happening where breath has to actually move through your vocal cords and having been a professional vocal coach and singer for years this is something that i'm crazy passionate about that i think we don't talk about enough your tongue is actually a muscle that is creating words with your mouth your articulators your lips all of that and if you don't stretch those things you are running a marathon and you're going to trip. So you have to make sure that you warm up. And it could be as simple as a couple of tongue twisters that you do. We have a whole thing we call the BFAB warm up, which is your breath, your face. So you're recognizing that your face is communicating as well, right? Like Steve couldn't do his his dad eyes if he didn't really warm up those eyebrows. So it's like well, my eyebrows were always warm. I know. Well, and that's like, I think for you and I, because we've been through they, you know, are, this my, they are my disapproval engine. <laughs> Mine are warm in this way. Like I can do the, you know, oh, the side. You yeah. But uh, you know, it's your, your breath, <laughs> your face, your articulators, and then your body and voice and recognize that your whole body, even if you're like, if you, if you pull your, hold your stomach really tight, it's going to affect the way that you're actually communicating. If you're breathing in, in your shoulders, it's going to affect the way that you're communicating. And you've, and you've also hit on another point. You stand. When I used to do television, we had a seated location and a standing location. When my energy started to flag, they would always make me stand up mm. because your energy is much greater when you're standing. Here's another thing though. And I'm not sure this is your strength. Okay. But silence isn't the end of the world. Oh, silence is amazing. Yes. So people, and that's where a lot of the ums come from is people mm. are afraid of silence. So as they're forming their next thought, they're not just going, I disagree. They're going, um, uh, you know, and they're, and they're wow. filling this in, and, and, and that's an insecurity thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if, imagine if instead you took a pause, what's going to happen to your listener? They're going to go, oh, what are they going to say next? The other thing I think that reminds me of the double chin thing again. Right? Is she going to do? <laughs> we have this thing in camera confidence that we call the five P's of the prepared performer. And it is so pauses is one of the P's, right? Silence, pause, power, how loud or how soft you're speaking, percussiveness. So how mm -hmm. hard you're hitting your consonants or you kind of, you know, um, purposefully being a little softer. Uh, the, the pitch how high, like if you're really trying to get somebody energized about something, are you going to speak with a higher voice or are you higher, yeah. going to bring it down here? Right. And then your pace, which we addressed at the beginning of this video. <laughs> <laughs> Stuart is asking any tips for bald men to stop the glare with the light above him. Ooh, uh, are you using powder? Yeah, the pa powder would be the only way to get around it if, if the light's there or wear a cap. You know, there's nothing wrong with wearing a cap. If you, if you want to, you know, you can yeah. do cool guy cap, you know, you can do Steve in the hood. I mean, I think at some point you're going to want to like, you know, show your awesome baldness. And so I, you know, a cap, or I, I would say just get a really good like powder or a, a powder foundation. That's and, not just and, a regular powder. It's something that actually like matte, and, a really good matte. And I'm going to be a little bit like, it's not a big deal because it's not me, but yeah. your eyes are important communication tools the top of your head's not. So a little bit of glare on the top of your head is not the end of the world. The problem with glare on glasses is not the glare. It's that you lose sight of the person's yeah. eyes. Yeah. yeah. And I, but I think also this ties back to that case idea of awesome, right? So if, if it's something that Stuart, when you're doing your videos, you notice it and you start paying attention to it and you get self-conscious about it. It's not about what other people think. It's about what you think. Like for me, if my bangs start doing this on videos, I, 
become crazy. Yes. So I you that's your, that's your thing. Yeah, but nobody else would care. Some people probably like their they don't care. that. Exactly, they don't care. Yeah. Cynthia says uh, that when she's teaching online, she runs a second computer logged in as a student, so she can monitor. That is a terrific idea. It's terrific to do as live streams to make sure your feed is good. Yeah, I just keep my phone near me, and I then I can see the make sure because I like on you know on something like Streamyard or BeLive, you can see the comments coming in. You can't on Zoom, so you that's where I make sure I always have my phone next to me. I even if you're worried about sound not working, you can test it um, having your phone there as well, which is a really great idea. Patrick's just found us on YouTube a couple of weeks ago. Thanks, good yeah. stuff, Patrick. And he found us here too because we're actually broadcasting this just to my personal channel, so uh, or my blogging channel. So that's good. I love it. Rob's so loving good. the topic. He passed on passed on the brother-in-law now doing sales on screen instead of live. Okay, good stuff. <laughs> good stuff. Can you talk about what getting the right lighting on camera? So, I uh, wherever possible, I. I, I look for great natural light. If you've got good windows somewhere in your house, I, I'm using natural light right here. I've got a nice set of LED lights set up permanently, but I've got, this is all natural light for me. Um, you so use a ring light. You just use yeah. a single ring light, right? Yeah, so I turned it off but because I actually have amazing windows here, but I have extra windows on this side. So you can see that it makes this side of my face dark and this side bright. So if I move my camera really close to the windows, that would probably be the best way to do it. But what I do, because I know I have this light coming in here, you want to find balanced light. So I have a ring light that it was, you know, that was the biggest investment that I made once I really started doing this professionally. It was about, they have them that can start around 79. I think mine was maybe 200 because I got the higher end one. But um, I put it a little to the side so that it balances out the light that's coming from here. Spend a little more getting one that you can tune the color on so you can make it 5,700 Kelvin, which is sunlight. And that you can also dim. Now, here's a little, here's a ninja tip that will help a lot. We've lost Molly. She's gone. Oh, she's gone. Is the colors changing? It's yes. Changing colors. Okay. Barely. It's, it's hard to tell without you on camera. Yeah, I know. I was thinking with the white, you could see it, but maybe not. So here's a ninja tip. Do you <laughs> yes. see how I pop out of my background quite nicely? Yeah, you do. Do you know how? How? If I move my head. Do you see my chair there? Behind my chair, I have a Ooh, light. Oh, I like it. So that's a backlight. That's that's in the it's in the back, and that is just creates a, a brighter, a more lit. There you go. Is so this what, that, it is? what that does is it will create a distance between the, me, me and the background. It's nice if you can have a nice bokeh where you can have the background out of focus and you have a narrower band of focus, but that's difficult to do in these sorts Wait, of situations. That's but such a, a good tip because you would never notice that was there. No, but it makes a huge difference. Huge! I yeah. love it. Yeah, I'll turn I it off. I'll turn it off. Okay, cool. Yeah, because you can see it when you move like that. And then I'm so sad that I have to go in a sec because I've got to get my other call started. Blah, 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 blah. So now, and, and nobody would notice it too much, but now just a, it's a little. Yeah, it's especially where the wall is, like the, um, it's a little darker over there, right? So you're, it's not bringing a bright, like because of shadows and stuff. I love it. Yeah. And Peter McKinnon talks about it. He's the, the, you can get a little light, just a little LED light. And the yeah. other, it would also work. I sometimes put it just on the, uh, beside the lamp, beside that little flower or the plant that I have there and, and I'll put the light there. So just a little bit of light in the background makes you pop. Just a little ninja I tip. love it. So good. Um, yes. And yeah. you gotta go. It's I five minutes. Go I have to run this other call that I'm starting in just a few minutes. But we'll just do that. This has been so awesome. You're it's been best. fun. Molly, tell people where, where it's the preparedperformer.com. Yeah, actually I have a little thing that if you go to molly.live slash dotto you can learn all kinds of cool stuff there, dotto, D-O-T-T-O. And um, if you head over there, I've got a video content planner, a map to millions toolkit, which will show you how to really, you know, the strategy behind getting more people to your videos. Uh, some Steve really loves messenger bots. And so I have a whole thing just for Steve about messenger bots. <laughs> Steve accidentally messaged my messenger bot this week and it was our last week. It was the highlight of my week. I was trying to invite Molly onto this and I got her bot instead and I went ballistic. And my team member messaged me and was like, whoa, Steve is really mad at your bot. <laughs> I was like, that is the best ever. <laughs> oh my well, gosh. thank you, Molly. Thank we'll you. Do it again so sometime. Much. Yeah, I would love to. And I want to have you on my show too. I'll so do it. We're going to make that happen. Okay. Sometime I love you. I'll let you go. You. I'll wrap things up. I'll bring April on. April, you can okay, awesome. April. Bye, April. Bye, bye now. Bye. Okay, bye. Okay, that's Molly Mahoney. I don't know if April wants to come back on. Her camera's not on, but I'll wrap things up. I'll just wrap things up here. And as uh, oh, there he is.
Hi, April. We Hi haven't there. seen you all day. I know. Hi, everybody. Happy Friday. Happy Friday as well. That, <laughs> that was, was fun. great. That was fun. She's got yeah. way too much energy for me. Seriously. She has a lot of energy. I love it, though. And I love um, I love her branding with her glasses and her hair. She's just very cool. And I got to tell you, Molly is one of the – she's a phenomenal performer. Like her, 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 her singing, uh, she's a great jazz musician. The musical theater numbers that we do, I just, I just want to, I just want to be in the musical so I can watch Molly prepare and do, do it. She's a really, a really, a really brilliant performer. So we're lucky, we're lucky. We've got a few at, at in this crowd at Social Media Marketing World, but Molly is, Molly's the top of the, top of the list as far as I'm concerned. Don't tell the others I said that. We won't. I won't. Everybody, keep a secret. So let's uh, <laughs> let's wrap things up. Let's tell everybody coming up this week, webinar Wednesday next week. We're going to be talking about uh, Chrome or not Chrome. We're going to talk about your web browser, and we were looking at the your favorite plugins, and uh, not just my favorite plugins, but the ones that you use the most. Your yes. browser extensions, how you make the browser more functional, and how you make it work better in your life. So we're not even going to be talking about anything related to the damn virus. We're going to just be talking about more productivity, getting more out of your computer, back to the basic stuff that we like to do on Dotto Tech. So that's going to be coming up this week on Webinar Wednesday on Dotto Tech. If you check out the YouTube channel, there are lots of videos on using Zoom. We're talking about Zoom alternatives. We show where by, where be this week as well, which is the old appear.in. I don't know if you folks remember it, but we loved that tool. So that is also on the on the so drop by the Dotto Tech YouTube channel and check out that video. Am I missing anything else, April? No, I'm just trying to um, get to the link to share with everybody that Molly mentioned. It was camera her URL. Like I'm not finding it. I'm sorry, and she didn't drop oh. it in the chat here. Um, Molly, oh, people say Molly Live. Oh, Molly Live slash Dotto. I think it is. Okay. I I actually went to it earlier. Well, I think that was for this, though. Yeah. You know what, friends? I'll I'll get it and I'll put it in the chat here after I'm put it in the chat yeah. for both Facebook yeah. and YouTube, Sorry regardless of where you happen to be. Everybody embracing my gray. Look at this. I love that. Yes. Embracing my gray. I Feel think that. that within a couple more months. The gray zone is going to have so many new members. <laughs> that we're going we're, we're gonna to have to. We're going to. Yeah. Indeed. Yeah, we'll, we'll try and get Paul, Molly's link up, Dan. Yeah, we'll, we'll work on that. So, yeah, uh, making sure we get it. And we'll, it'll be here on Facebook or on YouTube. And Great. we'll it's also include it in the um, – anybody who's not registered for our newsletter, um, that would be a good reason to register. We'll make sure that we send it in this, in, this sat, in this Sunday's newsletter. We'll have the link there as well for that. It, can you make a note of that, April? Yep, I can. And here's the link. I'm putting it in now. There we go. Oh, so what's he asking here? Does Steve do any type of audio compression? Uh, the name is Anthony, by the way. <laughs> I feel like Dwenty, though. Okay, thanks, Anthony. Um, it's just such a long name. Um, there is a small amount of audio compression that's done through the Rodecaster. It, 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 it's got a limiter, and it's got a compressor built in that is set for this microphone. So there's a preset for the RE20. So I haven't gotten tuned it, but I'm using the presets that come from Rode for this microphone. So there's a little bit that there is a little bit of, of compression happening on it as well. So there we go. All right. Let's, uh, oh, they, I think people got the, uh, yeah, I know the URL. Did we get it? Awesome. Yes, we got it. Yeah. Thank yep. you, Rob Bell and Thank others. You. I'm sure. Yeah, you good. guys are great. There was a lot of good conversation. That was fun. Very fun. High energy, which I think all of us can appreciate. Yes. And we probably got an hour and a half content in the hour with Molly. Yeah. She oh. like, wow, a lot of amazing tips. I learned a lot. It's also just the pace. Just rapid fire. It was good. It was good. You guys did a great job. Yes. I'm, I'm sure she sleeps well at night. I'm sure she sleeps well at night. <laughs> Everybody, I hope you all sleep well tonight. Uh, have a great weekend. We will see you all next week here for this live stream again. We okay. appreciate you one and all. Thanks so much to you. Until next time, I'm Steve Dotto. Have fun storming a castle. Have a great one, guys. <laughs>